Welcome Val to your first BSMG webinar. Hi Jen, thanks for having me. You're about to have a lot of fun. Just wait, just wait for it. I can only imagine. <laughs> Oh, let me just close my email or it'll just keep dinging. All right, guys, welcome. Um, as people come on in, uh, we're just going to keep on talking and get started. This webinar is recorded and everyone who's on will get a link tomorrow to the recording of this. So if you want your owner to see it, an admissions or marketing coordinator that works in your school, this is going to be a really great one to share with them because we're going to give you guys some really great tips on how to increase your organic traffic or rather your organic leads on your website. So I want to start by introducing Val, Valerie McBee, who I have the pleasure of working with side by side daily in different cities. Uh, Val, introduce yourself to everyone today. Hi, guys. My name is Valerie. All my friends call me Val. So now that we're besties, Val it is. Um, I've worked in the digital marketing space for over a decade, both on the paid side and on organic, and love to focus on CRO, so conversion rate optimization. I have thousands of tests under my belt, and I'm here to help everyone utilize the knowledge I have and the experience I have to make your website perform the best it possibly can. Awesome. So as someone who's, of course, worked in a school valve, um, I love website leads because to me, they're the second best converting lead. I always say that a referral is best. Referrals usually convert to about 50 to 75%. So for every referral you get, there's again, 50 to 75% chance that they're going to enroll. Referrals are the best type of, of, uh, of source that you can get for leads. So they're free and someone else is doing all the work for you. It's like a friend, you know, telling them about you. So that of course is great. But the second best source is always your website leads. Val, why do you think that is? They already have a connection to your brand. If they're coming to your site, they already know who you are. They either heard about you through a friend, so to your point of referral, but wanted to do some more research, or they found you already doing their own research and had a connection to you. Right. Um, so you don't have to you don't have to sell them as hard. They're there seeking information themselves as opposed to you kind of attracting them to seek information like you see with other channels, paid media channels, social channels. Mm -hmm. um, they're already looking out for you. So that lead's always going to convert higher. Absolutely. I, I love a website lead, but the problem with schools today is they have not set up their websites for conversion. And y'all, that's just wasted traffic to me. A lot of people are just relying on a lead coming to a website and just picking up a phone and calling when they're ready or going to the top, going to the contact, seeing a long form and filling that out. And the fact is you guys are probably getting tons of traffic to your website and very little conversion if you have not set it up to convert. And what we want to do is give you guys some really easy, actionable tips on how to make your website easier to convert so that your admissions team has more leads in the CRM to work. That is the goal. The goal is not to wait for that lead to come to you right before they're ready and picking up a phone call. The goal is to get them to fill out a form so that your admissions team can go ahead and start the sell. That's how it works. That's what, that's what we're going to accomplish today. So we're not going to be giving you tips on how to get more traffic, but we will give you more tips on how to turn your traffic into more leads. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If y'all have questions, pop them in the chat or wait to the end. Um, completely up to you. What I am most excited about is after we're finished going through our, our tips, we want to get you guys involved. So we're going to have you guys, if you want it, whoever's brave out there is going to be able to put your school website into the chat and we will review it on the spot. A Val is super nice. So she's going to be super sweet about it. She's not going to beat it up too bad. 
but we're going to give you some tips on how to convert your traffic instantly. So we're going to start with the five best practices, okay, for your website design. Val, what's the first one? Always design for mobile. I know you're tired of hearing this. Um, it's been kind of a buzzword in the space for over a decade now. I look to see our traffic um, on BSD just month to date for August, 87% of it's from mobile. So if you are designing for desktop first, stop, fire whoever's doing your website. Mobile absolutely needs to be the focus. Anybody who's finding you is finding it on, on you on their phone and you need to be optimizing the experience to be best for a device this size, not a desktop computer. You know, Val, something I always hear schools say is, yeah, I mean, our marketing company made us a website and of course it converts to mobile. But what do you mean by this? Because there are things you need to do specific for mobile that is different than just a desktop easily converting to mobile. Sure. So um, one of the things that I had on here that we talked about was page load speed. So if you have a giant image at the top of your website that isn't shrunk down for mobile appropriately sized, it's going to take a long time for that photo to load onto the page. That's what I'm talking about here. Somebody who comes to your, your site on a mobile device isn't going to wait for it to load. So you have to be cognizant of image size, image placement. And then when you're displaying content to the user, it's got to be broken up into digestible pieces. So a you know, long section of content that looks fine on desktop is going to be overwhelming on mobile. Somebody doesn't want to scroll and scroll and scroll before they get to the meat. So have shorter, you know, paragraph blocks, use bullets to break it up, have CTAs in between the content blocks. So if the user is ready to take an action, they know exactly where to do it and they don't have to scroll around and try and find how do they connect to you to find out more information next. Yeah, so let's talk really quick about CTAs when it comes to mobile, because obviously if I go onto a school's desktop version, it's going to have a phone number at the top. There might be a chat on the side. There might be a contact. You might scroll down a little bit and there is a request information. You know, a desktop will have tons of CTAs, but how confusing is that for a mobile user because the screen is this size? Yeah, and you need, you need to be really specific about um, how you're labeling the CTA so that the user knows exactly where it's going to take them. Mm -hmm. I would recommend using, um, you know, buttons that say get more info or request more info that then cycle the user back up to the form so that they can immediately submit it. That's always been a best practice of ours. It's also if you don't want to put buttons in between content, Sticky footers are great. And what I mean by a sticky footer is as the user scrolls past the form that you have on the site, have a button that hovers at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Developers know what this is. If they're a good developer, they know how to add it in pretty quickly. It stays there, gives the user constant reminder um, and, and path for how they get to, you know, connect to you really quickly um, with a, without a lot of confusion and is an easy transition from desktop that can be overwhelming to a more simplified mobile view. Great. And then the last thing I want to touch on mobile is the phone number field, right? Correct. Like when you are asking users for specific information that requires different keyboards, make sure that you are developing it in that way. So that if the user gets to the phone field, the keyboard that pops up on the device is the phone keypad. Don't make them click over to the phone keypad and then put in their number. No user wants to do that. And it's a really simple and easy switch. And honestly, they're they're probably pretty likely to hit a wrong number because then it becomes just like the keypad at the top. It's so annoying. I'm all about the actual number keypad coming up. And I am shocked how many schools are doing that incorrectly. It's one of the first things, you know, I do when I work with the schools, I go on their website and I'm like, hey, you need to switch this out immediately. So that's great. Let's move on to point number two. Highlight unique value. 
Um, this can kind of like, you're so busy, you want to get a website out there so that potential leads can contact your school. Take the time to be really thoughtful about how you're positioning yourself. How are you different than the school down the street? What do you want users to remember about you? Um, is it, you know, your facility is brand new and um, state of the art and up to date? Or are your students the biggest cheerleaders of your school? Whatever that message is, make sure that you're displaying it loud and proud on the site, through the content, through your imagery. If somebody is coming to your site, you want to be presenting them with the, the best you can be. Um, so be really thoughtful about identifying what that is so that it's a theme throughout the content on the website. Mm -hmm. The other thing I will say is use, I know it's hard and I know getting real images of your school is the last thing that you want to worry about, but it matters. Like we've all seen the same barbering stock image of the guy in the chair and the straight, like nobody wants to see that on every yeah. site that they go to. So pay attention to the visual, like visual imagery you're putting out there to the user because it's as important, if not more than the content that you're you know, writing to explain more about your school. It's also misrepresentation. Like sometimes people grab these stock photos and then they come to your school and you're like, the, the girl was wearing jeans in the photo. Everyone is in here is in scrubs or this is not what your salon looks like. Um, I love when schools can at least, you know, every couple of years, just bring a photographer in, get some actual really good images um, you know, and use them all over your marketing. I think that's great. One of the reasons I actually chose this photo is because increasingly schools are adding eyelash extensions to a Cosmo program. I did this at a school I worked at like several years ago and overnight, overnight, it, it increased enrollment in cosmetology and probably because the competitors weren't doing it. And we knew that people were asking for eyelash extensions. Um, and the, again, the reason I brought this up here is because I just talked with the school two weeks ago and he was telling me that they added eyelash extensions to their program. I don't know, like last year. And I was on his website and I'm like, there's literally no mention of that. That is such a unique value. That, that is a point of difference. That is something that would attract someone. And so schools are failing to mention a lot of the really cool elements of their curriculum, of, you know, competitions that they have. They get to go to shows every year, like the ABS show or something. These are, these are things that you should be putting on your website and sharing. Uh, anything else to add before I move on? Great. Love it. Number three. So this is kind of a, a like teeter-totter area. So informative content, what I mean by that is highlight your programs, tell the user enough information about the program that they want to talk to you more about it. Um, and I that's where I say it's a teeter-totter. You don't want to answer every question they have and you know what they are. You know when they come into tour, what additional information they couldn't get on your website that they want to know about. Don't put all of that on your website. It won't give them a reason to contact you. And I know that can be a really hard balance, but talk about the things that are taught in the classes. Talk about what a day in the life looks like paint a picture for them um, so that they're interested in learning more. And this is kind of a double benefit for you in that if you're doing this well, if you're talking about the programs in depth, providing really useful content to the user, Google's also going to credit you for that um, because it's the information that the user wants. They're spending a lot of time on your site. They're reading through the content. That could also help you when it comes to search volume and traffic to your website. Um, so absolutely, this should be an area that you're investing heavily in um, mm -hmm. throughout the site. So Val, when it comes to landing pages, and I know, you know, we're talking a lot about a website. Uh, I'm a believer that landing pages do not need to have as much information on it because you're paying for a click. It really needs to be, the best practice should, should honestly be a form and a little bit of content. Um, and I think you'd agree with that. Absolutely. 
But when it comes to the actual website with conversion, what are you seeing? Is it the homepage that converts? Is it the program pages that convert better? Where are you seeing conversion usually happen? Um, typically conversion pages are going to convert at double the rate of your homepage. Okay. Um, it's just, it is a more educated user that is hitting a program page versus a homepage. Mm -hmm. um, On-page conversion is typically higher on program pages than it, than it is on homepage, just because you also get a lot of users to your homepage who are already students, or maybe they're potentially competitors who are trying to see what you're what you're doing, what's going on. Um, so you get a lot of kind of ancillary traffic to the homepage that aren't just students looking for a school. So absolutely the program pages see a higher conversion, right? So that's really good for schools to know because I feel like they really focus so much on that homepage conversion when in reality, leads are clicking the program pages. They want to see what kind of content you have on there. They want to see photos. They want maybe links to videos. They want to see, you know, bullet breakdown of the program. And what's funny is schools sometimes don't even have lead forms on those pages. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge missed opportunity, regardless of what the page is. Um, if it's an FAQ page on your site, if it's a page that you have about accreditation, every page of your website should have a lead form of some sort so that the user can contact you when they are ready. Yep, love it. Um, and while we're on, maybe this isn't completely related to this, but it's something that I see pretty regularly on, on school websites. Sometimes they don't even have that request. It's just a straight up apply now. I have thoughts on this. How do you feel about this? I think when you say the word apply to a user, it freaks them out because mm -hmm. it gives, um, gives kind of the idea that it is more committal yes. on their part than it is on yours. Um, if you just change out that wording to request information instead of apply now, I promise you, you'll see a 10 to 15, maybe even 20% jump in conversion rate. I agree with you. I've always said apply now to me. It sounds like you're naming your kids on the first date. You're just, or like book a tour right now. It's like, Oh my God. Like I just Googled you and, and now you're like book a tour now, apply now. It just seems really aggressive. And I think you're missing a lot of those kind of like early searchers or people who are just kind of like dipping their toe in it. Um, the fact is that's the admissions job. I don't know why schools are, are turning their websites into the job of admissions. Like admissions should be taking people from that consideration stage straight, you know, to the end of the funnel, instead of just like come to our website and do all the work yourself and start your application. I don't hate and apply now in a, in a drop down, by the way. I think there are people that know they want to go to school. I don't think it should be your main call to action. So I want to be clear about that. I do think having an apply now button on your website is not a terrible idea because there, again, there are people who want to do that. It just shouldn't be the focus of your conversion on your website. I agree completely. And I mean, the last thing that I will say there is like, that's an example of something really small that you wouldn't think is going to have a huge impact on CRO, but does. Yeah. So there needs to be continual testing. You, you need to have data be behind some of those choices on your site so that you know you're going the right way. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Even using just changing up the verbiage on, you know, on, on the button and, and adding an instead of request info, request info now, just adding that now could could boost your conversion by 5%. Like, this is why I know our company is really focused on constantly testing things. I think it's something schools don't do enough. They throw something up and they call it a day and they haven't changed their lead form for five years you should be testing these things regularly to see what's getting you the best results. Absolutely. Here's that barbering photo you just mentioned. This is it, guys. Well, that's there embarrassing. It <laughs> there it is, Korea. 
Um, so I talked about this a little bit before, but having a balance of both imagery and word content on your site is really important. It can't just be images and videos. It, you absolutely need to have some images and videos on your site, but that can't be the whole experience. There mm. needs to be some like content um, there that the user can consume and feel comfortable with, you know, who your school is, that you're well established, that you're credible, um, that they can be confident in the, you know, experience that they're going to have with you being a positive experience initially from, you know, interacting with your website. So make sure that you're balancing both types of content aren't heavy one or the other. And then again, as much as you can use unique photos or videos, and it doesn't have to be the highest quality. I think sometimes we get caught up on that. And when I say highest quality, like you don't need a videographer to come into your school and take videos of classes or of students practicing. It can be a video on a phone as long as it's decent quality that is uploaded to YouTube. Like it doesn't, I mean, have your students help you. Like they will absolutely jump on, you know, the, the chance to kind of create their own and they'll be really good at it and it'll come across as genuine and unique and authentic. And that's what it needs. To, that's what it needs to be. Like these can just be embedded YouTube videos. They yeah. can be images that you take day to day. It doesn't have to cost you a ton of money. Here's what I love to see schools do. I like them to have yeah. in action photos. I am so sick of seeing school websites with like, like a model that's just like posed like an idiot. Like that's not a, like, it's an after photo. Like that's, I get that you're showing that someone, you know, eventually is going to have beautiful hair and makeup and they're like, like they look dumb. Like that's, that's not a representation of a school. You need to have in action photos, have photos of students working on doll heads. They like, that is going to help a lead picture themselves at your school. And honestly, if you work in admissions, you will hear this time and time again. I don't have any experience. I've never touched scissors. I'm afraid to cut hair. How soon am I going to be out on the floor? This is a real anxiety of hair school students. This happens all the time. And of course they're feeling that way. All your photos are these professional photos and you're always talking about your salon floor. Why not show people that you're going to build skill and confidence working on mannequins before you even touch the salon floor? Having photos of that, of practicing, of in the classroom, that type of thing is lacking in schools, on school websites. And those little tweaks make a big difference. It will help a lead decide, like, this seems like a, a school for me. It doesn't feel as, you know... I don't know, intimidating. They're going to throw me on a salon floor. I think the more you can show that, the better you're going to relate to a lead who's afraid to go to school. One last thing I want to say before we move on. Yeah. If you have a mixture of both text and imagery, the user is going to stay on your website for longer because there's different content that they're engaging with. And that is a trigger for Google that they're finding the information that they were searching for, and it's going to boost your traffic. So a lot of these CRO elements that we're talking about also have ancillary benefits on the traffic side, and this is certainly one of them. Great. You're so smart, Val. Thanks. <laughs> um, clear CTA. Let's talk about call to actions, because I know we've already kind of touched on it, but this to me is like the main difference between a website that generates leads versus one that doesn't. The main goal here is kind of threefold. One, make sure that it's easy for the user to find the call to action. Mm -hmm. Two, label it um, and have the experience align with what their expectation is from that call to action. Um, and then third, don't clutter it. Uh, everyone loves a chat. I love a chat. When you have that on your, on your site and it functions well, great. If you don't have somebody there ready to chat or a service that's doing that for you, 
you might want to reevaluate. Don't have a chat over the main CTA. Like make sure it's a really clean design and experience so the user doesn't get frustrated with all of these things popping up on the screen and them not knowing what to do or how to exit out. Um, absolutely, you have to be intentional about making sure that the design is really clean. And then after you've attracted their attention and they're ready to take a next step, make sure that the form is designed as efficiently and effectively as it possibly can be. Do not take more information on that form than what you need. It should be their name. It should be their phone number. It should be their email and maybe what program they're interested in. If you have a multi-campus school and you need that for routing, fine, add in the campus too. Do it in a dropdown that's easy for them to select. Make sure the phone number <laughs> bounces to a phone keyboard like we talked about earlier. If you can have first name and, that, and last name in one field instead of two, awesome. Mm -hmm. Even better. Like, don't take their address. Don't take how did they how did they hear about you? How did they? Get oh God, I hate a how did they hear about you? Shoot me. I mean, that to me is not valuable for a school because if you have set up your sources correctly, you will know how they heard about you. You'll know that it came from a Google ad. You will know it came from a Facebook ad. You will know when you meet with them that it was actually my friend Ashley went here last year and then that's a referral and you can put that in a secondary source. Do not ask them on a lead form where they heard about you. Yep. Rant exactly. over. I mean, geez Louise. Ask them, use, use that as an, like an opening introduction conversation starter yes. for somebody on the phone. Like, I'm so excited to hear about, you know, hear from you. How did you hear about us? Like, find it out then if you need to find it out. I agree. And another thing, don't pre-qualify them. Don't pre-qualify them on a lead form. Which start date are you interested in? Uh, I don't even know anything about your school. I haven't even met you. And now you want me to, to tell you if I'm going to start in January, February, or March. It's so cringe, Val. Like the less fields will get you more leads. Absolutely. I, I tell people as a general rule of thumb, each additional field you add on the form is going to drop depending on what the field is, because mm -hmm. there are some that cause friction with users more than others, will decrease your conversion rate from 10 to 25%. And I will tell you that address is number one. They don't want you to ask for their address for whatever reason. Like you remove address and you will see a 20% 20, 20 boost in your conversion rate. Also, why do you need it? To send them a catalog? Well, ask them when you get them, on, get them on the phone, oh, you can't come in for a tour? Would you like me to send you an information packet? Can I get your address? Like you do it then. Asking everyone is, you know, you're asking one question to eliminate like 90% of the possible leads. I mean, it just, it blows my mind. So I think that's great. Again, clear call to action should not be contact us. Contact you about what? what why, why do I have to contact? That doesn't make any, no, you need, uh, your call to action should be request information. Let's get started, you know, um, give me answers. Well, whatever you have, your call to action is to get the leads information so that your admissions team can rock it. Those are our five actionable tips. Before we get into the fun stuff where we are going to look at actual websites, and this is only going to work if y'all decide I'm ready. I'm ready to give you my website. If you can take it, we'll be kind and maybe not. Who knows? Um, I want to tell you guys about our new website performance package that we, we're, we've we already started this with a few clients. Um, you know, Val, why don't you quickly share with everyone a little bit about why we are so qualified to do something like this and how long we've been helping schools get leads. We've been doing it for over a decade, um, probably closer to two plus. Um, this is our bread and butter. Like this is what we kind of hang our hat on is I can 
I think it would be scary for a ton of people to come on this webinar and say, throw your website in the chat and I will look at it real time. I haven't seen any of these and tell you what you can do different that I am 99.9% .9 confident will increase your conversion rate. Yeah. Plus we've tested it. Like I'm not coming on here and saying, I don't know that this works. I don't have any data behind it. I have thousands of tests under my belt on hundreds of different websites. We know what thematically users, you know, react to that make conversion rates go up. We know what's important and what's not important. We know what areas of the page are important. We know what elements of a form are important. Mm -hmm. um, because I've done so much testing, I can confidently say, I know this will work. Um, and there are very few companies who have really invested in this area in the way that we have invested. Traffic is expensive. If you're not getting the volume from your website to convert, then you're buying paid traffic because you need the lead volume. And I was going to say that. I think, I think most marketing firms do focus on that paid traffic. I mean, this isn't, this isn't popular to say, but it's because they're getting a percentage of your marketing spend. I mean, of course, of course, that's where they want you to dump your money because they're getting 20% of your entire ad spend. So they're putting all the focus into paid when, oh my gosh, your own website could probably be getting double those leads. You could cut your PPC in half. Like you can reduce paid costs if you invest a little bit more in, in just converting your organic traffic. And by the way, organic traffic converts better than paid traffic into the, into actual students. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I know it can be hard when you have, you know, a smaller pool of users traffic wise that are visiting your sites like that, I'm sure is an excuse that you have heard from agents, you know, other marketing agencies too, is you're not getting enough traffic for us to test. And like, there is something viable to that. It may take you longer to get test results, but that's why we're here. I want you to have a baseline to work with that we've already tested into. Like you don't have to waste your time. And I will just say before, before we share what this package would include and we get into some live audits, um, you know, our number one product over here is Beauty Schools Directory. We're converting hundreds of thousands of our, of our own traffic hits into actual leads. And our lead form is intimidating, Val. I mean, it's eight steps. It's not what, what we're talking about. If we went to what we're talking about, we would probably, what? quadruple our leads, but we're doing that. So it's better quality for our schools. Um, that's one of the reasons we have a multi-step form is we are doing some of our own pre-qualifying. So we're not selling schools, you know, terrible leads. Um, that being said, we know how to convert traffic with a lead form. It's what we're experts in. So I'm going to share with you guys, and I'm so excited about this because for the longest time, BSD really has been um, Beauty Schools Directory has kind of like been our main product, but since we've launched this, we've seen really great success. I love to point out Mary. We love us a Mary. Um, she was just on LinkedIn the other day talking about how she can't believe overnight she saw leads. You know, Mary called me. She has a small school in, in Oregon, and she was getting about four to five leads a week. Um, it's an aesthetics only school on her website, about four to five leads a week. And Val and the team put a really great converting lead form on her website. And in the first five days, she had 25 leads. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Um, now, I obviously we can't guarantee results like that with everyone, but what we can guarantee is actual results. And this is something that our company is doing. If you don't get more website leads within the first month, you can break your contract with no penalty. Um, but for the, the cost of this program, it's $500 a month. And do you want to go over what they get for this? Sure. We'll do a complete audit of your site and provide recommendations on exactly the changes that we want to make. Most often, um, or at least in, in most experiences, there's not a form on the site. We're gonna build that form for you. We're gonna put it on the site. 
Our developer is going to take care of that. We're going to QA it to make sure that it's functioning correctly, um, is optimized. You know, to my point, the the phone field is the way that it should be. Um, that the form is auto advancing once users you know completed one form field, they're going on to the next. Um, and we will set it up so that those leads get dir delivered directly to you, whether that be through CRM or through email, that's your choice. Um, but we'll go through and make those changes on the site. Again, like we'll work with you and collaborate with you to get the access that we need. And we're also gonna set up GA to make sure that we can track the performance of the site and make adjustments as needed to ensure it's converting as high as it possibly can. Um, that we're, you know, seeing the conversions on, on specific pages of the site and we can report back to you which pages are doing best and driving the most conversions where we maybe need to focus more. Um, so it's not just, it's not just kind of a one and done fix. We're going to set it up and, and leave it be. Um, we're going to drive some analytics behind it too, so that we really know what's going on and can diagnose ongoing um, where our focus needs to be to continue to convert that traffic. And then, you know, if you don't have a CRM currently, I can recommend some really great ones to you guys. Um, but if you don't have a CRM or if you're part of a CRM that does not have auto texting and no extra charge, we'll set up an auto text message to go out to all those leads, let them know that an admissions rep will be getting in touch with them um, and confirming that, that we received their lead. So this is something that can be set up, you know, probably within a month, pretty quickly. And we'd love to work with your team on this. If you're interested, shoot me an email at jen.lyles at beautyschools.com. There's my phone number. Feel free to text me um, or you can call me. Just don't leave a message because I'm not going to listen to it. But you can definitely text me and I will get back to you. I want to show you guys really quick an equation on the ROI and organic leads. This is going to seem super small, but it's such a big impact. Again, I'm really, really passionate about people lowering marketing spend and putting money where it matters. I do lots of webinars and, and talks on this that people just need to quit wasting their money. Like if you're doing a Pandora ad, stop. You, you, you're just, that's embarrassing. Um, you know, there are, there are just areas where you don't need to be spending money. And one of them is hopefully over time, you can reduce your paid, your paid spend if you're getting more organic leads. So let's just say, for example, you're getting 40 organic leads a week. Maybe you have two campuses and you're getting 20 a piece, something like that. But you're getting four organic web leads a week. We believe that with a really good converting lead form, you can easily maybe double those leads, but let's just say you increase your leads by 30%, okay? That's going to give you 12 additional leads a week. So now we're looking at 52 leads a week that you're getting by just a very simple tweak. You're talking about spending 500 bucks a month to get 12 more leads. Well, what's the conversion on that? Generally, in the beauty school industry, organic leads on your website convert at about 15%. That is a really good benchmark. And if your admissions team is doing a decent job, it should be around 15%. Let's say your program costs 20 grand, which is a good average of a cosmetology program. Guys, this is what you're looking at for a very, very small investment. This is what you can be getting in return for that. Organic leads are probably the greatest area to invest in because it, it's, it's very cheap and the ROI is so big. It's so big. Um, I all, you know, I, I meet and consult a lot with schools and they ask me like, what two areas or five areas should I be investing in? And I always say, you want to try to increase your organic leads because they convert the best. You want to have a really great culture so you can get more referrals. And I would invest in some admissions training so your team knows how to convert. Those are the top three areas I would spend money. And instead, what I'm seeing is schools just saying, okay, let's just put, put another grand, put another five grand into PPC. Everything's about PPC, PPC, PPC. There is value to spending money on paid ads. But if you are looking to not spend 10 grand a month or something like that, this is a perfect investment for you. Now we're going to take either questions from the audience, or if you want a real live chat, 
audit of your website and listen, maybe it's amazing. Maybe it's great. Wouldn't that be amazing if we can just check some out that I think are great? Um, I'm going to bring it up, of course, on my computer, but then Val's going to be looking down at her phone to see the mobile version because we think that's more helpful. So if someone has something, I want you to go to the chat part and I want you to type it in. I promise I'll be kind. <laughs> Who has something? No, no one. I see a hand is up. I see hands are up. Does that mean that no one can type things into chat? Oh, chat is disabled, Morgan said. Oh no. Angie, is there a way to un um, disable the chat? This is terrible news. Give us a second to figure this out. I think if anything, it would be on you because you're the host. Or it might have been something that got set up. In settings? Yeah, like at the start before we started the webinar. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to let everyone text me their uh, URLs instead. That's going to be a lot simpler. Just bring up your phone right now, and I want you to text me. Um, at 256-431-7532. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up my phone number on here really quick. Oh, this is terrible, y'all. I'm so sorry. And we've always had the chat working. I'm not sure why it's disabled. There's my phone number at the bottom. If anyone wants to text in right now, um, your website, we can go ahead and do the live audits. Otherwise, you can email me and we can just do it privately, not in front of everyone. So it's Jen, J E N N dot Lyles at beautyschools.com. We can do it that way. I'm not getting anything. Oh, wait, we just got one. L A C A dot E D U. Thank you. All right, Val, what are we seeing? I love this view more button on mobile. Um, I think that that's smart. Um, it's a really quick, like really quick kind of click action. I would give a color behind the button um, so that it highlights it even more. Um, one of the things I'm noticing, like really clean design, really heavy image focus though on the homepage. So mm -hmm. I would put some bulleted content with these photos, like the way it displays on mobile is just like quick, clean images, not a lot of content on the homepage. I would put some bullets or a quote testimonial from a user. Um, speaking about their experience with that, that program, how much they enjoyed it. And then what I'm noticing, um, which is the trend is there's not a form on this homepage at all. I'm gonna click into the Cosmo page and take a look. I like the color blocking. I like the, you guys can kind of see it. I like the color blocking of the text because it does break it up. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there's no place immediately for a user to click to get in contact with you. Yeah. I'm guessing there's probably a contact form somewhere. Um, if you go to the footer, there's a phone number, right? So right now what we're doing is we're relying on everyone who comes to your website to take the initiative themselves to pick up a phone and call you. Um, under the about section, there is a contact us form. I'm going to it right now. I have it up here. Um, where people just put in their name, email, and send a message and that's it. If you, I would you need a form. You need a form. You need a form. I, I mean, at, at least there's a, a spot for them to input their information. Mm -hmm. I would remove the message. I would ask for phone number. 
Um, mm -hmm. You're going to see much higher contact rates if you're getting the phone number on that form and a user is not going to be hesitant to give it to you, especially if you set up that like you may be sending them a text that's way less committal than a call maybe. Um, they don't want to, they don't want to type you a message. They don't know what to say. Yep. And they may feel like they have to send you a message. Um, I, I absolutely understand the intent you're giving them an opportunity to, you know, speak to you without having to speak to you. Um, but if they don't know what to say, they may just bounce. This is the kind of school that would see like a four times lift and lead flow, like just by putting a form on the website. And um, if this is something you can't do on your own, again, contact us because we'd love to work with you in this area. But you guys are a perfect candidate for almost immediate lift and lead yeah. flow. Can I just tell you what I love? I, I, is this your school? Because holy crap, it's gorgeous. Like if this is your actual school and not a stock photo, it's so pretty. Also love the logo. There's just some like, aesthetically it's just very pleasing it doesn't look dumpy it's it really is a pretty website it's just not set up for conversion all right we're going to go to the next one hopefully that was helpful to you academy salon spa.com let's go is this trisha's website Yes, it is. Love it. Oh, and there's a video behind. I'm not sure how that video is playing on the homepage on the web on the mobile. How's it looking? Is it so a that video? That video is hidden for me on mobile. Okay. Um, which I think is perfect. Probably smart. Yes. That was really smart for you to hide that video. It's going to take a long time to load. It's going to be probably distracting because you're not going to see enough of it on mobile for it to work well for you. I love that the form is right at the top of the page. It is to on mobile. There's a very click, yeah, a very quick call to action. I would suggest if I were to change anything about this form, I would put the name, the phone number, and the email labels actually in the fields. I'm suggesting that you do that because it shrinks the size of the form. You're still telling the user what information they need to input there. Um, but by making the form smaller in height, it's going to seem less intimidating to the user and little things like that can make a big a big difference when it comes to them actually filling it out. Is the phone number set up correctly? Is keypad coming up? Let me see. No, it's not. Okay. So she's getting a full keyboard. So full that keyboard. So change that. Have your, if the developer that you worked with on the website should be able to switch out that keyboard in five minutes, you will see an automatic boost from that. The button send message. Don't love that. Change I don't love that now. either. I would have it say, um, it may be a, a nice kind of transition for it to play into the headline that you have on the form. So your journey to a new career starts here. I would have this button say, start now. Yeah, <laughs> um, let's get started. Like something, yeah, something that lets them know that that's what the send message um, is not to me speaking to a lead. Let's go to a course page and see if there's a lead form on there. One more thing I want to say about the homepage. Yeah. When you scroll, this header doesn't get smaller. It make it better. Make it smaller. Um, condense it. You're taking up too much of the real estate of the page. And the con if somebody's scrolling, they want to see content. Let them see the full content. And that's a pretty a pretty quick switch too, where you can um, just shrink the size of that header as the user interacts with the site. I agree. I'm on the Cosmo page right now. I'm not seeing a form. I, oh, I see apply now. If you, if you click the become a student button, this is the form that you get. Um, That's like an application. It's long. I like that it's a very prominent button for the mm -hmm. user to select. I like that we're driving people into it. I would reduce it down to the same size as the other. 
form. Yeah, it should be the same form of the actual lead form. So first name, last name, email, phone number, maybe course selection. I know you guys have Cosmo and SD. If you want to have, yeah, if you want to have that longer form, there is this like become a student section of the site. I would put it on that page. Drop that form into that page so that if if the user, you know, is ready to be more committal, it feels natural for them to provide more information on that page, throw it in there and keep the form shortened for the rest of the site. I love that the images are action shots. I love that they mm -hmm. um, look, you know, genuine and authentic. Mm -hmm. There's video content as well as image content and a good, a good amount of text content that's not overwhelming. It's easy. The, the text content's broken up into chunks, which I love. Yeah, that's great. We actually had someone text in a question. I'm going to give y'all my phone number again. If you want to text me a question or your website, 256-431-7529. Um, we have a question from someone. Does having pics of staff online, like a meet the team, help conversion or help leads feel more comfortable to reach out? Absolutely. Absolutely do that. If you can um, kind of segment off a, a page of your site that is, um, you know, about us or about the team, about the staff, absolutely do that. Like include a picture of them so that the user can get connected to who potentially they're going to see in the school when they come in for a tour. Tell them a little bit about their background. How long have they been working in the space? In the space? How long have they been teaching? Why do they keep teaching? What's yeah. their favorite part? Absolutely do that. It is not going to hurt the conversion of that traffic. That's not going to be a page that you get a lot of natural go like Google traffic to. Um, so a user that hits that page is going to be researching more about your school. And that's a great way for them to feel really connected on an individual level with what is going to be expected when they walk in that door. What I love is when schools add just like favorite ice cream flavor, like something very personal, um, my very first concert, like something cutesy that's very, you know, about their personalities. It makes you very relatable. Um, doing that kind of thing on a staff profile also, I think is, a uh, is a cute idea. Yeah. Um, it, does, I mean, it doesn't have to be super serious. Something fun like yeah. that. Is perfect. Yes. Perfect. Um, Jenny Lee I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. And I met Dominic at NACUS a few months ago. They are a new member of ours in, where I live in the state of Tennessee. Um, thanks for typing in your URL. What do we think? I'm coming. <laughs> it's taking me a second. Um, I love the call out at the top that gives... Um, kind of details on when enrollment is happening. If you, yep. most schools are going to have, this is not something we talked about, but most schools are going to have um, kind of rolling admissions or start dates that are once a month or every other month. It does help conversion for you to kind of put that in front of the user so that they know if they want to start now, there's time available for them to start. Um, make sure that it's updated. <laughs> make sure that it never like rolls past the date, but I like that that is there. Um, I like the headline on the form. Like I want to learn more, puts it in, you know, in the space of the user feeling like they're getting something. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's how you want the intention of the form to be is you want them to feel like they're getting information back from you. I don't love the program buttons. Um, we typically see a better conversion from a drop down. So that's something that I would immediately want to, to test and that we have tested previously and saw that the drop down works better mm -hmm. than a button selection. Um, I would, I would lose the message um, no, no, no. section and I would actually test 
a different color submit button. Um, just because as you scroll down the page on mobile, like you'll see here that there's a submit button and then the header of the content section next is this like purple background. You want that button to pop from the screen. Mm -hmm. You want it to be aesthetically, like aesthetically pleasing. So I don't want that to be like a bright yellow button, but you could make it, you know, a magenta or a coral or some other supplemental color um, that would still work with the overall, but would pop a little bit more on mobile um, from the other content sections. Yeah, I agree. Do you, what do you think of submit? It's good. I think submit's fine. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I think submit is okay. Is the phone is the keypad coming up? Did we look? Let me see. It is. Woo! You get an That's extra gold up. star for that one. Now let's go to a program page. How's conversion? Because we know that program pages convert better than a home page. So how are we doing on that? Let's look at Cosmo. Ooh, we have an apply now. Where does that go? Sends them to an online application form. I would not do that. I would have this button go to an oh, actual sure. short form mm -hmm. experience. I would have that short form. So in, in kind of light of this, like book a tour, so there's a, a form at the bottom. I would change the headline of this from book a tour to get more info um, mm -hmm. or learn more to match the experience on the homepage. I liked the, the like phone label here is best contact number. It's defaulting the way that it should be defaulting. I, I like that um, labeling just because it signifies for them like what information like what phone number is going to be best for you for us to reach you at um so I do really like that but I would I would change the coloring of this form too to not have a white background So like I would put instead of that white background I would have a color background and have the form fields be white so mm. it pops from the page stands out to the user a little bit more um, and I'd also in between some of this like content, I like that there's different types um, and organization of the content. There's both paragraphs and then some like graphical bullet point sections. It would be a perfect, you know, spot in between those two kind of sections for you to throw in another CTA. Great. Hopefully that was helpful to you guys. I want to thank you guys for attending. I really want to thank Val for doing this webinar because she's she doesn't do them a lot with me. I think I think she's going to do more. Yes, we can have you back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this was fun. And just a reminder to everyone, this is a new product that we've launched. If you go on beautyschoolsmarketinggroup.com, you'll see it there. Uh, get in touch with me. We'd love to work with your team on this. At the end of the day, this is a small investment for really big ROI. And if you are not a BSD member, if you do not buy leads from us, um, you can still get all the member perks by using this product instead. So that would give you a customized profile on our website where you can have links back to your website and things like that. And if you are looking for more leads in general, Beauty Schools Directory is a really great solution for a lot of schools. I do not suggest you cut your marketing budget. Always just kind of come up with an additional budget for this additional source, I would love to share with you how lots of schools are getting enrollments with our leads. Thanks again for everyone coming today. Um, and we will see you next month. I cannot remember the topic, but I know we have a webinar coming up. And I just got a text from someone who said, great webinar as always. Thank you so much. Thanks for being a fan. That's got to be Chelsea. It's Chelsea. Love me some Chelsea. <laughs> She's a great admissions director um, and I appreciate you guys coming. Y'all have a great day.